Good morning. Uh, new monitor, so um, the stream will look a little bit different and be a little bit of a learning curve as we go through it. So it's an ultra uh, wide monitor. So now I have two windows that are next to each other. We have the back end here on the left and the front end on the right. Um, so what we're going to be working on today is that I need to put in currencies. So that's this section here. So let's take a look at my code for currencies. If I look in the back end, a currency is made up of a currency name, a description. So we'll look at my interfaces here and go to an I currency. And we got currency name description. We have the application user, which I don't care about. And the number of currency streams. It looks fine when I put the quality on 1080p. Okay. So I can also zoom in more. So that's not a problem as well. Okay. So what we want to have on currencies is I'm going to open up my currencies here, HTML, and let's grab bots as my reference and copy this in. So in this, we're going to have something called a currencies container, which will have a loading. We're going to say that this is currencies. And then here, we don't need this one, but we do need this create currency called create currency and then we're going to have a table which is going to have on it a and if I open up my interfaces and pop that to a new window I currency is here so on this one we're going to have the first one will be a currency name, which will just be called name. And I just want to have here my, it'll be an A that navigates me to this router link called currencies for my element.id. And I want this to be a element.currency name. The next one here will be description. like that, called currency description. The last one here will be remove, which looks good, and we'll say remove currency. Mm, that looks fine. We don't need a map page generator on this one. So now we'll take my bots TS here. And bring that into currencies.ts. And also the namespaces. It's kind of fun to program on this thing. And we want to have a on destroy. And I don't need to have this mat paginator. We do want to have the sort. And we have a currency name and a currency description. This is called currencies, which is a I currency called I currency. And this is going to be a currencies received, R E C E I V E D subscription. And then you're going to have a remove currency receive subscription. And that should be it. We don't have this authorize anymore or authorize Twitch or that one. We do have a remove currency subscription, which is get remove currency. The currency was successfully removed. Remove currency. The currency could not be removed. Please try again later. Currency could not be removed. Okay, this one here is a 
currencies received subscription. And it's going to be get currencies. And we're going to subscribe here my currencies, which is a I currency array to this. There is no paginator. This is going to be request currencies. Our two events are this one and this one. This is called create currency. And on this, we'll just have an alert here called create currency invoked. And this will be a remove currency. And it'll say, are you sure you want to delete this currency? This will affect all users in the stream. And if it's confirmed, then here we're gonna do a remove currency. Okay, we can get rid of the global services in my router. And that looks pretty good. So on my web hub, I need to have a one of these here called currencies received, which is an I currency array, and then a remove currency received, which is a Boolean. And then a create currency received, which is a boolean. Okay, so down here underneath providers, we'll have one called, well, we'll put it under bots. Okay, and the first one we have here is called receive currencies, which is a currencies I currency array called currencies received. The next one here is you have a create currency, which is a boolean and a create currency received, and then a remove currency, which is a remove currency received. Okay, we need to do the same thing down here. So under bot, I'll do request currencies. We're gonna do a request currencies like that. And then you wanna have a create currency, which is if this dot hub connection then we're going to have a this dot hub connection invoke create currency and we want to pass in my request which we need to define here as a currency or we'll just call this a request which is a i currency and we'll look at this one and we'll duplicate it and we'll make this one an i currency create request like that Okay, the next one here is to do a remove currency, which is a ID, which is a string, and this is gonna be called remove currency, which is the ID. And then down here, under this one, we can say, get currencies, which is a I currency array. And we're gonna return currencies received. The next one is a create currency, which is a Boolean. And it's a get create currency. And it's a create currency received. And then the last one here is a get remove currency which is remove currency received. All right, Bobby, bye. Thanks for kicking it. I'll see you again. 
Okay, so that's it for here. So now on the back end, on my hub, I need to have my functions in here. And we had a We'll put them right here. And the first one is going to be a public asynchronous task called request currencies, right? Like that. And we can bring in my this one. And this is going to be a currencies get currency uh, create and then currency remove because we'll do all three of them at one time. Currencies get this is going to be read currencies asynchronous like that. And this is going to be called receive currencies and it's going to pass in currencies. The next one here is going to be a create currency, which we need to have a, under my library, I should have a currencies folder. And we'll make a one called, we'll make a one called currency create request. And we want this to be a base request. Like that. And then on this we want to have a string for the ID. And then we want to have a currency name. And a currency description. Do you use delegates? I do, I use a lot of delegates. Mostly in my business logic layer. How is TypeScript different from C Sharp? Um, the formatting's different. It's a lot more similar to Java with the way that the classes are written out. Um, it's not completely different, but it is JavaScript. I mean, but once you know one language, they're all kind of similar, you know what I mean? So on this one down here, we want to have a task called a currency DTO called read currencies asynchronous, which will just be the application user ID. We also want to have one called a currency VM, which is a read currency asynchronous of a good ID and a good application user ID. We also want to have one for a currency VM which is called create currency asynchronous which is going to be a currency create request which is called a request and the good application user ID. We need to have another one for update currency asynchronous And then the last one here is called remove currency asynchronous, which needs to pass in the GUID called ID, and it needs to return a Boolean. So in the hub, now we can pass in my application user.id. Okay, that's good. Let's do the next one called this is currencies get sorry currency create and this is going to be a create currency and we want to have in here a currency create request called request and we'll put that in right there and this is called currency And this is called receive currency singular. And then we'll write the log.
Now here, you actually want to do this a little different. We want to say if my good.tryparse of my request.id and a out var string, then, so if we can't parse it out, then we're going to do this, and this is my request.good. This is going to be called a currency VM. And otherwise, you want to do this one with an update currency. And then this we can simplify it like that. This is going to be a application user.id. Then this last one is called remove currency, which is called currencies remove. And it's called, we're going to read my currency of my GUID ID. And then we want to say if my currency does not equal to null and my Second, await services dot remove currency, which we're going to say is called, and we're going to pass in my ID and my application user ID. So if that is both true, then we're going to send this currencies like that and return OK. Otherwise, here we're going to do a await clients.caller.send asynchronous receive currencies will be a null. This one we want to send here something called a remove currency, which is called a bool. And then we want to do a, this is a true, and I want to do a await receive, uh, request currencies asynchronous. Like that. We'll say that this one is a bad request. Like that. Okay. We need to do the same thing on the create here. Because I also want to do a await clients.caller.send asynchronous here called create currency, which will be a true. And then if my currency does not equal to null, then we can do this. Otherwise, we'll do this stuff as a false. And then this one is a bad request. That should do it. Okay, on the hub. Hey, Glass and Glitter, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Yeah, the new monitors, uh, the middle monitor is now new. It's ultra wide screen, so you can see how I have it on stream. Uh, where I have now two windows up at one time. I have a Curves monitor, it's nice to use. I've only been using it for about 12 hours and so far I say I like it. Okay, so we forgot to have one more in here which is called a currency received, like that, which is here receive currency, which is just one. Like that. Then down here we have a no, no, we don't have one there, but we do have a get 
currency. Like that. Okay. So that looks pretty good. It says that here on my web service. That it can't find on 326. No, that looks fine. Oh, my internet keeps cutting out. I think I heard some of that. I apologize about that. Okay, so now when I look at my currencies component, I think we're good to go here. So all you want to do for this create currency is instead of this, you can do a router link to be currency. Have a good stream. I need to reboot our router. Okay. Nice. Kicking it. So now we're going to look at our request currencies and I can go ahead and I can run it. Oh no, I'm going to fail because I haven't written the back end code. So we need to look at our services and we need to implement these down here. So here we go, using var context equals new application db context, I'm going to do var currencies, which is called entities, equals context equals await context dot currencies dot where my application user ID is equal to application user ID and it's active. And then we're going to do a DTOs in here, which is a new list of currency DTO. And then we're going to do for each of our entity and entities. This needs to be a virtual asynchronous task. I want to do a var DTO equals mapper dot map from my to a currency DTO from my entity, and then we want to do a DTOs.addDTO. And then down here I want to do a return currencies, I'm sorry, return DTOs.toArray. Okay, we can copy this for the next bit. And this is a virtual asynchronous task again. And we're only going to get the first or default asynchronous where the ID is equal to ID and the S dot application user ID is equal to application user ID and it's active. And this is just one entity. And now when I map this to a var VM equals and we're mapping this to a currency VM. If I look at this, it also has a number of currency streams in it, but I'm not using those right now. So here we could do a if my entity does not equal to null, then we can do a return this. Otherwise we want to return null.
Okay, create currency. I need to look at my data access layer here and in my auto mapper under currency. I want to have a new one here called currency create request, which can map to a currency. I'm just looking to see if I need to have anything in here. Any, any explicit rules. That looks okay. So in this one, this is another virtual asynchronous task. And using my var context equals new application db context, I'm going to do a entity equals mapper dot map to a currency my request. Then we want to say entity dot application user id equals application user id. And then we want to do context dot currencies dot add my entity. And then we want to return my context dot save changes asynchronous is greater than zero. Oh no, if that is the case, then I want to return await read currency asynchronous of my entity dot id and my application user id and otherwise we want to return null and this we can make conditional in the last we have an update here so for this one we want to do a virtual asynchronous task and I want to get my entity here as a var entity equals await context dot currencies dot first or default asynchronous where the ID is equal to and we want to do a if my good dot try parse of my request dot ID out var good. And we want to get the application user ID is equal to application user ID and it's active. So if my entity does not equal to null, then we're going to do my entity dot, and it was called a currency name is equal to my request dot currency name and entity dot currency description is equal to request dot currency description entity dot timestamp equals date time dot utc now context dot entry of my entity dot state is equal to modify and then if my await context dot save changes asynchronous is greater than zero then I want to return and we're going to await my read currency asynchronous of my GUID and my application user ID. Otherwise you want to return null. Okay, the last one is the delete. So for this I'll use this update method. And this is a virtual asynchronous task. I don't care about this. We're going to get my current, my entity, where this is equal to ID, and I don't care if it's active this time. And then all we're going to do is my active is equal to false. that and then we'll do a return false looks good so we can close these things up and we can move these to where we want them which is not here we'll put these up here
And now we can run it. Now I'm expecting my components to be good to go here. So we log in. Take a look at currencies. We do request currencies. We get a log, we return them, we have zero. It's gonna go ahead and do a receive currencies. That looks fine. Let's go ahead and run it again. One thing I want is on bots here. I wanna say ng if equals bots dot length is greater than zero. And we're gonna do the same thing here on this table for if my currencies.length is greater than zero. Perfect. We click create currencies and it should navigate me to currency, but it didn't. So if I take a look at my routes, Currency doesn't have one with nothing, so like that. Still not navigating me. Beautiful, now it's working. Okay. So that's good. Our currencies component is done. The next one we need is our currency component. So we'll look at the bots here, just a single one. And I'm gonna copy this in. And we're gonna say that this is a currency container. And it's gonna have a title here, which is called currency name. And then in my content, this one we want this to be an input. Like that. And then in my content, we're gonna want another one here for currency description. And then below this again, I think that's all we're going to have right now. And then you have a back button and a submit button, which is called save currency. And this will be called description and description. Okay. So on the TS itself, we need to have some stuff. We can take this. And add it in. like that. And then up here, we're gonna have a currency name and a currency description, and that's it. And a loading. And then this is gonna be a currency subscription and a currency create subscription, like that. We wanna have a on destroy. 
Web development looks so complicated compared to game development, for example, Unity. So I do both there, Sad Frog Dev. I work both web development and game development. They're different. Uh, web development goes faster. Uh, game development um, yields uh, pretty fun products, but they take a lot of time. Okay, we are going to want to have this location and our route and our web hub and a mat dialog and a toaster service and a router. So all we're going to do is we're going to assign this ID. We don't care about this one. This is a currency create subscription. You have successfully created the currency. And then this one is the currency could not be added. Please try again later, which is remove currency failed. It's this. Okay. This one is my currency subscription. Would help if I spelled it right. Subscription, which is called get create currency. This one is get currency, which is a type of currency called a I currency. We'll also want to have up here a currency, which is a I currency. So this is my this dot ID equals currency dot ID. And we also want to do this dot currency equals currency. And then this dot currency name and currency description is going to be the currency currency name and currency description. And then you want to do this dot loading equals false. On a knit, we want to do this dot web hub dot request currency singular. like that, which is going to be the string of the ID. So on the back end now, we want to have a request currency singular, which is passing in the good ID. And if I look at this one, we want to have a, hey there, Soth. Three ob, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them into the chat. That's a currency get. This is a read currency asynchronous of my ID, and then this is a receive R E C E I currency of my currency. So up here, where we're doing this, we want to say if my currency exists, then we want to do this. Otherwise, I want to do a toaster service dot error. The currency could not be loaded. Please try again. Could not load currency. So this is request currency of my this.id. 
This is my currencies create and my currency subscription. Back is my location dot back, so it's not. Like that. Okay, so we get our back. This is called save currency. So if my currency name doesn't exist, then we're gonna say you must enter a currency name. And we'll say currency name required. And this is my currency description. Nah, I don't care about that. I'll make that one. Okay, we want to have a bool on here called is save last action, which is true. It's a boolean. So here, I want to say if this dot is save last action, then we're going to do let's pull this out here. Let's remove this. So now here I'm going to say if this dot um, if my currency does not is exists, then we want to do one thing. Otherwise, we want to do another thing, and then at the end of this, we want to do this dot is save last action equals false. So this is going to be this dot toaster service, which is called the currency was successfully saved. Currency saved. And then this one will be a success, and this one will be an error. The currency could not be saved. Currency could not be saved. And we're going to say, please try again later. So now in this we're going to do a const request is a i currency create request which is this and we're going to say my id is a this.id and my currency name is this.currency name and my currency description is this.currency description Up here, we're going to say else this dot currency equals null, uh, undefined. This dot id equals that. This dot currency name is equal to that. And this dot currency description is equal to that. And then we'll do a this dot poster service dot error the currency could not be loaded please try again could not load currency looks good and then this one we want to do a this dot web hub dot create currency and we're going to pass in my request If I look at my currency.html, I can get rid of this required. 
And if I look at the HTML again, it should clear up. We have these two, which I can get rid of, and that's it. So on currencies, when we click on one, it should be passing in here a currency. So let's run it. Okay, we'll log in. Take a look at currencies. Don't have any, create one. It's good, it'll ask me to create a currency name. If I don't input it, it'll say you must input one. Good. So I'm gonna say pixels and we'll do a save. So it's gonna create it. It passed in the null. Okay, it created my currency and it returned it. it says currency saved, add currency was saved. Hmm, just a second. I can get rid of this and then that and then that. And then under currencies now, I should have my one. So let's take some of the code snippets here from the CSS and bring this into currencies. And we have one called currency name and one called currency description. Looks good. Doesn't appear to be requesting when we go into currency. That works. So over here under request currency, I wanna say if this.id does not equal to undefined and this.id does not equal to null and this.id does not equal to nothing, then we can do the request currency. which should be invoking it. So it says that it's undefined. Go up here. I think that this is a query parameters. Now it's working. and it loads correctly. Okay, and this time now on the web hub, we can get rid of this and then
What's going on here? It says it's undefined. And now it's working again. Weird. Okay, so if I was to change this, it should update this. And it does. It says you have successfully added the currency. That's wrong. It should be an update. So we're going to say saved. Like that. So back here, if I did the remove and I did a cancel, it will fire me in and it should have removed my currency and it did. So this looks great. And now what I want to have on it is I need to have status, right? So if I look at a currency, It's got a number of currency streams that it's attached to, which has the next issue date, the time interval to add currency, and what we're calling status. If I look at where this one was being used, that's fine. And in the statuses, this thing's got a status name, a time, a quantity. So, so far we're good here. So our currencies and our currency component are nicely done. So now what we can do is look back at my streams. And on this, we should be loading here my app stream currencies so if I look at that which is under shared stream currencies we have this add currency to stream and then this let currency of currencies here. So what I want to do here is I want to do a this dot request. We need to add in here a private hub service, sorry, web hub called webhub and this is my this.webhub.request currencies and then we want to have a new subscription here called currencies received subscription which is a subscription and on destroy We'll do a this dot currencies receive dot unsubscribe. We need to add a on destroy up here. 
So in here we can do a this dot currencies received equals this dot webhub dot get currencies. And we'll subscribe here my currencies, which is an I currency array. And we'll assign it to this currencies equals currencies. Okay, when we run it again, we look at currencies. Looks good. I can look at my stream. And if I look at my stream currencies, I see my available one and I can do my invocation. So if my this dot currency selected is equal to undefined or this dot currency selected is equal to null or this dot currency selected is equal to nothing, then we can say this dot toaster service dot error uh, warning to you must first select a currency in order to add it to the stream. Hey Zachariah was seen, welcome back. Okay, so we'll add up here my toaster service. And otherwise, we're going to do my invocation here. And this is where we're at is that we need to do stream currencies. Beautiful. So for this to work, let's see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take a short break. I'll be back here in 10 minutes. When we come back, we'll be working on the stream currencies. Uh, it's going to be pretty similar to what we just did. Um, should go pretty quick. Thanks for staying with me. Don't touch that dial. See you guys in just 10 minutes.